Have you ever been assigned a piece of reading and stared at it and recited all the words in your mind and still not really understood what it meant when you were all done? Well, this video is here to help you get more out of what you read. It's me, Moser, and after this video, you should be able to use the process of annotation to understand, summarize, and discuss a text, which might be a magazine article, a section from a textbook, or just a regular book, or something you found on a website. Let's get started. To begin with, you're going to need four things. Some sort of annotation guidelines. If you are my student, you'll be using these, Moser's Guidelines for Annotating Science Texts. You'll need a text of some sort. You'll need access to a dictionary. This could be online. This could be a paper dictionary. It doesn't matter. If you're using an online dictionary, you probably want to have two or three pulled up on tabs. And you'll need to either have an interactive whiteboard app, such as Doceri or Explain Everything, or a bunch of post-it notes, some paper, and highlighters. The annotation guidelines that you see here are something that I've developed, well, I really stole them from an English teacher and modified them to make them more applicable to reading science texts. So the first step is always to pre read the text, to skim a chunk of text, looking at titles and headings, looking at pictures, and, you know, those chunks, depending on how long the paragraphs are, depending on how complicated the wording is, could be a single paragraph, or they could be three or four paragraphs together if they're really short. Then you're going to want to circle any vocabulary words that you do not know. You can't skip those. You'll look them up, and it might take you more than one dictionary to do that. We'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. Once you've looked up all the vocabulary words in the chunk of text, you kind of reread it, now knowing what those words mean. And look for sentences that capture the main idea of that chunk. There might be one sentence that does it, or there might be a few pieces in a chunk of text that give you the main idea. After this, you're going to want to summarize the big idea that you get from this chunk of text, and then make connections, which we're not going to focus on in this video. That'll come later. The big thing for reading a science text is that you know you're done when you know what it means, you can summarize the whole thing, and you can discuss it, hopefully intelligently, with a friend. Okay, so I've got an article here called How Microbes Generate and Use Their Energy to Grow. And this is a direct screenshot from a website called Science Daily. You can see it's a screenshot. It's got ads all around it, and it's got a sidebar with other articles. It's pretty messy, so I'm going to clean it up. I'm just going to take that screenshot, open my photos, edit, and crop it down so I just see the article. This is really just the title and a brief summary that Science Daily has made, how microbes generate and use their energy to grow. Researchers have shed light on how bacteria and baker's yeast generate and use energy to grow. Knowing about cells' energy use is essential for industrial biotech processes. And it's got a nice picture of what looks like some yeast. So right away in this little summary, I've got a few words that I might not be familiar with. I've circled them, and then I've gone to several dictionaries. I've looked at definitions from multiple sources, and I found that microbe means little things you can't see, microscopic things such as bacteria and yeasts. Well, that's mentioned, ooh, right there, which gives me a hint I'm on the right track. Generate, according to several sources, is to make or to produce. Okay, so researchers have shed light on how bacteria, how bacteria and yeast make and use their energy to grow. Okay, good, moving on. I've gone to the next page, I've pre-read the chunk, and there are a lot of words here. Now, I am familiar with all these, but I teach biology. You might not be familiar with all of them. So, I've circled a bunch of words that I think might cause you problems, and I went to multiple dictionaries, because the important thing is, you can't write the definition for the word until you really, truly understand it. So, that means being able to write it in your own words. I've written these as sort of synopses of what I found in a couple sources. I mentioned in my longer video that for some words that are a little bit more scientific in nature, after you found a dictionary definition, you might want to read the Wikipedia article for the word. It might have a picture or something else that will be useful for you to understand what that word means. Now, once I've gotten those words and I can read through the article and have a better sense of what the whole chunk means, the chunk rather, I'm going to highlight some areas that I think 
get at the main idea of this piece. So, I've highlighted a couple of chunks here, and that's all going to lead into me writing a summary for this. And here's the summary that I came up with for this chunk. Someone figured out how to cell, make cells make more energy chemicals, and that will help us make better industrial processes with cells. Now, what I didn't mention in my summary is that the energy chemical they're talking about is ATP. If that's confusing for right now, that's okay. We'll get there. Again, I've gone through the process of circling words, looking them up in multiple sources to make sure I understand, and then highlighting some main ideas. They studied the metabolism, total chemical processes of E. coli and Baker's yeast, and the more ATP is available, the better the little microbial workhorses do. So these two studied yeast and bacteria and how they make energy and think they can make them work harder and better. Okay. Once again, I've gone through the process of pre-reading it, circling the words I don't know, looking them up in multiple sources. Ooh. And then I've highlighted the things that I think give me the main idea. There are two ways to do this. One gets you more ATP. The researchers were able to get the bacteria to do the process that gives them more energy. Okay, so what's my summary? They found that there are two ways for cells to generate ATP and that giving cells more protein and making some enzymes work harder gets more energy out. That's more ATP. Okay, one chunk to go, I think. Again, the same process. I pre-read, I circled words that I thought might be problematic. I looked them up in multiple dictionaries. Yes, I read the Wikipedia article on a few. because so I really want to make sure I understand what these words mean, or I can't make any sense of the article. So I've gone ahead and highlighted what I feel like are the main ideas. Cells performing their best used both ways, not just the high... If the high energy one, and that more proteins available meant there was more efficiency in a pathway. So they said that the big deal was getting cells to direct more protein to the high yielding pathway. What's my summary? Sending more protein to the high yield pathway makes cells perform best, produces less waste or byproducts. Okay, now I thought this was it. There is actually one more short paragraph. Hang in. This is really just a clarification of what the rest of the article was saying. The researchers exposed the microbes to different conditions. They didn't do genome engineering? What is that? Well, if you look it up, you find that that means altering DNA. So really, that just reflects back to the rest of the article to say that all this stuff they did, they did without changing the DNA of the E. coli. Now I'm going to take all four of those little paragraph summaries or chunk summaries that I did. I'm going to put them together and I'm going to read through it and I'm going to see if this gives me a real sense of what the article's saying. Now, if you happen to be using a Science Daily article, <laughs> there's a nice cheat. Read your little summary here and then come all the way to the beginning of the article Hey, look, this is Science Daily's summation. You probably need more detail than that. But what you're saying is a summary shouldn't contradict what Science Daily is saying. It should just be pretty much what they're saying, but with more information. Okay, that's what we've got. This was a very fast run through the process of annotating an article. You're going to try it on your own. And if you find that you still don't quite get it, there is a longer video with a lot more detail that you may or may not need to watch. So, go get your article. Good luck. Can you use the process to understand, summarize, and discuss a text? Well, I sure hope so.